Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for March 7th, 2024. I want to begin with a filing made by the South African government before the International Court of Justice, uh, which builds upon its previous filings, which led to rulings in January and then again in February, that the government of Israel must follow certain provisional measures ordered by the court the new filing asks for additional provisional measures to stop widespread starvation, which is now going on in Gaza as a result of the blockade of food by the Israeli government. Uh, the motion says that it, South Africa states, quote, it is compelled to return to the court in light of new facts and changes in the situation in Gaza, particularly the situation of widespread starvation brought about by the continuing egregious breaches of the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide by the State of Israel, and its ongoing manifest violations of the provisional measures indicated by this court on January 26, 2024. It calls on the court to act, quote, in order to urgently ensure the safety and security of 2.3 million Palestinians in Gaza, including over a million children. Now, this is significant in that the South Africans are continuing to speak on behalf of the conscience of the world. Now, this filing is, uh, comes in the wake of the so-called flower massacre, where more than 100 Palestinians were killed as they lined up to receive flour from a convoy of trucks and were fired upon by the Israel Defense Forces. Now, Israel's lies about the flower massacre have been debunked, even by mainstream media networks, including Christian Amanpour of CNN, who confronted Mark Regev, the advisor and spokesman for Netanyahu, and a former ambassador to the United Kingdom. Yesterday, a convoy of trucks from the World Food Program was blocked from entering Gaza by the Israel Defense Forces and eventually was turned away. Now, this motion from South Africa follows comments by Brazil's President Lula, which we've covered, who compared Netanyahu's policy against Gaza to genocide committed by Hitler against the Jews during World War II. Now, in, in this volatile crisis of civilization, which is facing two horrific wars, that of the NATO proxy war against Russia and Ukraine and the Israelis in Gaza, more voices must be raised. And we're beginning to see that happen, including voices that are reflecting the initiatives of the Schiller Institute's Helga Zepp LaRouche. Let me give you a couple of examples. In the Mexican Congress yesterday, Congressman Benjamin Robles uh, made the following statement. Colleagues, we have reached the very precipice of nuclear war and it is imperative that all nations raise their voices, not the voice of one nation nor of several nations, but of all humanity, for peace and against nuclear war. He continued, quote, let all the citizens of the world also unite in pursuit of a new international security and development architecture that guarantees the right to welfare and economic development of the people of the planet, achieving peace through development, that is the path. And of course, in hearing that, you can hear the reflection of the programmatic alternative put forward by Helga Zepp LaRouche. And then we have the warning from the retired Swiss intelligence veteran Jacques Beau. And Beau was talking about the European Union uh, moving toward what they're calling a war economy, so that there's more mon money that can go into defense production to prepare for a war against Russia. Uh, what Bo said is, quote, the problem is that in the West, it is now difficult to distinguish between political thought and racism. The hatred that people had for the Soviets in the Second World War has been transformed into hatred for the Russians, unquote. And of course, you know, from my continuing coverage of this, much of this is driven by agencies such as Chatham House, and the Atlantic Council, who have Russophobes, such as Keir Giles on their staff, 
pouring out lies and, and vilification of Russia um, virtually every single day. Now, we also have comments from a German expert, Colonel Ralph Thiel, a retired colonel, who's the chairman of the Political Military Society of Germany and president of Euro Defense Germany. And he said the following, he said, Germany should not be driven into a war by the British. He was asked to comment on the British prime minister's critique of Olaf Scholz uh, for his opposition to giving the Taurus missiles to Ukraine. And Thiel said, quote, the British are the drivers of a belligerent situation, or I'm sorry, of a belligerent solution to the problem. That is to bring the Russians to their knees through war. We should not allow ourselves to be driven by the British, unquote. That's from retired Colonel Ralph Teal. Now, as we see these new expressions emerging, look at the U.S. election season, the 2024 presidential campaign, and you see an absolute voter rebellion in both parties. Uh, take the Democrats. The numbers of people who are voting against Biden, anyone but Biden, in Michigan, 13.3% voted uncommitted. In Minnesota, this Super Tuesday, that rose to 20% uncommitted. North Carolina, 12.7% no preference. Massachusetts, 9.4%. Colorado, over 8%, and so on. These are voices who are expressing they have no trust or desire to see Biden continue as president, primarily in opposition to his support for Netanyahu's policies in Gaza. Now, in the Republican primaries, Trump swept through the Super Tuesday, winning 14 out of 15, uh, and it led to his last standing opponent, Nikki Haley, announcing yesterday that she is withdrawing from the race. She was the candidate of the Never Trumpers, a hardcore neocon when it came to the matters of war, uh, a total reincarnation of the Bush war ma machine. But it's notable that at least one-fourth of the voters in the 15 Super Tuesday states voted against Trump. Now, on, on one key issue, Trump and Haley agree. Full support for Netanyahu. And Trump express, expressed this on Fox TV uh, the day of Super Tuesday, he said Israel must be allowed, quote, to finish the job, unquote. He's been very ambiguous on, on this policy, but it's hard to see that he represents an opposition to the deep state and its war drive if he's prepared to give a go-ahead to Netanyahu and the ethnic cleansing of Palestine. Now, we, this is not a time for ambiguity, but there must be sharp re rejection of the unipolar order, and the United States and Western Europe must drop the policy of geopolitics, of constant confrontation, and instead look for cooperation, especially with the nations of the global south, the former colonial nations, uh, who are rallying around the Chinese and the Russians through the BRICS. Now, the solution for Gaza, what uh, Mrs. LaRue said, is a Mideast conference, a comprehensive Mideast conference with the OASIS plan at the center. And for Ukraine, recognition that the war cannot be won and that the best deal was the one that the Ukrainians almost signed in March 2022, which would be no to NATO, a neutral Ukraine, and an end to the attack on the region of the eastern Ukraine, the Donbass. Now, what uh, Helga Zeplerou said in my discussion with her yesterday, which will be linked in the description section of today's update, is that we have to find a solution based on diplomacy. And for that, Western nations and their leaders have to be shaken out of the unreality that somehow there's a military solution and the population must get them to see that the continued direction is toward nuclear war as some of the people I quoted earlier have indicated. So we can't let the 2024 election in the United States be an unwanted sequel. So the question posed by Helga Zeplerouche uh, is actually the one that all of us have to answer. She asked, are we an intelligent species or not? And that will be decided 
by your response to this question of war or development. And I remind you tomorrow will be Friday. I'll take your questions and comments. And I, I will have a link both to the discussion with Helga Zeppelin-Rusch yesterday and the video that the LaRouche organization did on the OASIS plan. So let me hear from you and let the world hear from you as well.